Hey, this is Isara with UX in Motion, and welcome to an exciting beginner tutorial. In this lesson, I'm going to show you how to quickly set up and animate a simple scrolling animation in After Effects. So let's get started. Awesome. I'm going to show you what file we're working with first in Photoshop. Uh, again, you know, it's it's After Effects, so you can bring in whatever you want. This one has a bunch of layers on it. I didn't actually design this. I got this from uh, a company called UI8. They make really cool uh, UI screen design kits. Um, I'm just going to show you this one real quick. This one's the activity feed. Just tons of really cool, really clean designs. Uh, profiles. I think I used this one on a uh, tutorial. Um, this one I grabbed from the stats. One, they just got like all these crazy screens. I can't believe somebody spent all this time designing all this stuff. Um, so if, if you want this, if this would make sense for you in your project, click the link here or down below. I just thought I'd share it because it's cool. Um, all right, let's jam in After Effects. So I'm gonna go ahead and import my file here. I'm just gonna actually start fresh. Let's start with a blank canvas here. And before I get started, if you haven't animated in After Effects before, go over to my website, uxemotion.net, and click the link there, put in your email, and I'll send you a free fast start video on how to animate in After Effects. Uh, it's for designers, it's for people who've never animated before, it rocks, people watch it, they like it, go watch it. If you've already watched it or if you know what you're doing, then we're all good. So I'm gonna hit Command I and import my landing page. This time I'm gonna bring it in as footage. You'll know in the past, I almost always recommend composition retain layer sizes for your UI animation projects. In this case, we're gonna rock footage because we just want it to be a single layer. That's what After Effects can do. You can drag that to your comp icon here and After Effects will make a composition the same dimensions as your layer. You can see right off the bat, the composition's too big. So if you hit Command K, um, you can see that we're actually not working at a you know a regular screen size resolution. We want to be working 1080 by 1920. Awesome. But you'll see when I do that that it it crops. So it's it's cropping it from the larger size to the smaller size from the top and bottom equally. We want it to crop from the top down. So if if you click the Advanced tab over here and click Top, boom. Now we have the top bar. We're cool with that. Go back to basic. Make sure you're working at 60 frames a second over here. Uh, you may be working in some weird setting here. I recommend 60 for doing UI animation. It's sweet. And if your numbers don't look like this, if they look like this, uh, you can just hit command click in this area and it will toggle between them. Real quick, I'm gonna be using these back pocket Fibonacci numbers, which were great at 60 frames a second. I'm gonna be using these as the intervals between the keyframes and for the keyframe easing velocities. You may not understand what that is right now, but in a second you will. And these are awesome. If you're new to animating UI stuff, I would recommend using these as back pockets and then uh, tweaking when they don't work for you. Cool, so I'm gonna jump over at 13 frames. And I like to give my animations a little bit of headroom here. And you can see 13 is a number, a Fibonacci number, cool. Now I'm gonna put down a position keyframe and the way you can do that is if you hit P on the keyboard, brings up your position, you can click that, or you can hit Option P with your layer selected, and lo and behold, you have a position keyframe. I'm gonna jump over 89 frames now, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, back one, and now I'm gonna just reposition this artwork. So I can just click and drag. If I hold down Shift, it'll just click and drag up, and I can move it wherever I want to. You can also use these numbers down here. You can click and drag, or if you happen to know, you know the number you want, you're like, dude, 700, you know? In this case, I don't know, I'm just gonna slide it up, call that good, jump over another 13 frames, 10, and hit N to end my work area. I'm gonna close this off, RAM preview. It's just a linear animation. Not cool yet, but it's gonna be in a second. Now, I'm going to click my graph editor here and have a look at my graphs. This is where we create the, the motion that feels smooth and gestural. So one, one way to select your keyframes if they're not selected in the graph editor is to just click the property once. If you click it twice, it selects them. You can then click Easy Ease and it'll e create the easing. Now we want to have more extreme easing. So I'm just gonna select this keyframe here and hit Command Shift K to bring up my keyframe velocity. This is where I'm designing the curve 
of the motion. And in this case, I want the incoming velocity. So this is my keyframe, the velocity that's incoming to this point to be big. So let's make it 89, one of those uh, Fibonacci numbers. And you can see right away the curve just is changing and it's gonna land a lot smoother now. And the way I uh, teach people who've never worked with curves, it's like, you know, uh, you know, uh, picture yourself snowboarding. You're at the top, you're going slow, slow, slow. And then boom, you start cruising and then you just come to a nice graceful stop. I'm gonna RAM preview that. And that's what we get. And now I can go ahead and select this keyframe here and change the outgoing velocity here using one of my uh, Fibonacci numbers. We can try 55. That's great. And RAM preview that and it'll have a nice slow start and then it'll pick up speed and slow down again. One of the things you wanna watch out for is if your outgoing velocity is too big, your curve may start to look like this. Or if your incoming velocity is too big, your curve may start to become more and more vertical here. The more vertical that this region becomes, the more it's gonna look like a jump or a pop. So if I play that back, you can see it, it comes in nice and slow, but then it pops. Now. It depends on the style of animation you're designing for, right? Now, if you are designing something that's really crisp, you're gonna want the interval between these keyframes to be short. If you're designing something much more relaxed, like you're really just kind of sh uh, showing the design more than anything else, you're gonna want this to be nice and slow. So for instance, if I'm designing this to be a slow kind of movement, I might actually want to extend this out even further like this. And you can see that it takes this curve from being vertical to now a little bit more horizontal. And if I ram preview this, you can see this is a little smoother because this is so extreme, it's still pushing it out. So I might, you know, bump this down to like, you know, 70, something like that. So it smooths it out even further and you have a nice gentle curve here. Now this may not be what you want depending on the type of animation you're creating, in which case if you want something really crisp, say that takes place over you know, 34 frames. So I can go one, two, three, one, two, three, four. This is a much crisper animation. You're going to want to really pay attention to this curve here and maybe back off from this even more. So if this outgoing is, you know, 70, you might want this to be, you know, start with 34 and have a look at that curve and see that that's about what you're gonna get on and close this work area here and get that. So that's how you go about designing sort of the flavor and characteristics of your animations, whether you want it to be very relaxed and slow, you know, and have longer distance between the keyframes, or if you want it to be really crisp and tight, those are gonna be two completely different animation styles, but you can start by using these back pocket Fibonacci numbers and then adjusting accordingly in your animation. So I hope this helped and added value for you and your project. Thanks for watching.